Ladies and gentlemen, from the White House, the President of the United States. Good evening. It's now just a month before one of the most important elections we will have had in many years. I'd like to take a few minutes tonight to discuss quietly with you the choice you will be making on November 4th. It's a choice about the future of this nation. As President, I am the American official who represents all of you as I make difficult decisions here in the White House. This job has at the same time tremendous isolation, overexposure in the press, and tremendous responsibility. But I've not been dazzled by the office nor exhausted by the responsibility. I'm doing the job now as an experienced and established president with a workable vision of the future. I understand your problems better today than I did four years ago. And I'm running again determined to resolve those problems so that we may all take advantage of the wonderful opportunities in our great and free land. Our commitment to freedom and justice, our shared ideals, our strong families and communities, these are the foundations of America's strength. Let me look briefly beyond day-to-day -day politics. For well, this is not simply an election between two candidates. It's an election between two American futures. In order to arrive at the best future, we must stay on the best road. And the best road is not always the smoothest one. If your confidence carries me into a second term, I'm prepared to keep our nation strong and at peace, to preserve the foundation of our new energy policy, to rebuild the American industrial machine, to recapture the might of our great basic industries, to move forward with research and new high technologies, and to improve the quality of American life for all of us. This work involves imaginative planning and will depend on the further development of a new nationwide cooperative attitude, an attitude that is once again giving us a sense of genuine American community. As we showed in our fight for a sound energy program, we will never sidestep tough problems. And what we have already accomplished will allow us to do much more. But there are other problems that wait for us out there beyond Inauguration Day, important human problems that include not just the United States, where 5% of the world's people live, but the planet itself, where we all live, all four and a half billion of us. There's always a crucial question of world peace and the vast questions of hunger and the use of land and water and energy. Complex enough in 1980, but further complicated by the fact that in the year 2000, if the present rate continues, six billion people will live on this turning earth. Most of them will be citizens of nations already impoverished. We share these common challenges, and if the strongest and freest nation on earth will not address them, then who will? American food, American strength, American technological capability, and our human values will be crucial. We shall meet the challenges sensibly, just as we've worked to enhance human rights. Understanding both the uses and limits of our power, we will continue to use American ideals and influence for the benefit of all people. Eventually, though it will take time, the land of the free can contribute to the freeing of the whole world. These are just a few of the great opportunities that lie ahead. They can be realized only by people of energy and imagination, and we are a people of energy and imagination. No election will solve everything, yet it's accurate to say that this election will point the way. I know that many of you are undecided today, even though you share my confidence and my dreams for the future. I hope that in the weeks ahead, you'll give serious consideration to which path we will take on November 4th. The future is waiting for all of us. Thank you, and good night. The President. He is bringing traditional American values to his vision of the nation's future. Re-elect President Carter.